Who comes to mind when you think of the most charismatic people you know? What are the traits they all have in common? They're creative, charismatic, and have a vision for themselves and the world they want to create. What a lot of people don't realize is that building charisma is a lot like the levels in a video game. The first and second levels deal with external hacks, things that you can do to indicate to others that you're worthwhile paying attention to. The third and fourth levels build on top of this and focus a lot more on how you internally feel. This all leads to self-acceptance and the belief that you can overcome anything that comes in your way. The first thing we're gonna talk about is body language. People around you can smell it on you whether you feel comfortable or not. If you're comfortable, they're like, oh, they belong here. If you're not comfortable, then they're thinking to themselves, why is this person not feeling comfortable? What are they compensating for? And so the cool part is there are little habits you can implement that make you feel more comfortable. The first one of these I ever learned was in a book called How to Win Friends by Dale Carnegie. And he talked about the importance of smiling. At around the same time, I read another book called The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And he had all these things called comfort challenges. One of his challenges was whenever you'd see someone who was bigger than you in the street, stare them down. So I combined these two challenges. I made it a rule that every time I walked down the street, I would lock eyes with a stranger and I'd flash a smile in their direction. And my goal was to get them to smile back at me. And I love to do this, especially in airports. Because airports are places where people feel a lot of anxiety, they're stressed. But if you could just smile and get another person to smile, you made their day, you made your day. Now here's the thing that I've noticed. When your mouth smile, your brain physiologically now feels that you're happy. The second thing to know is how to use your hands and what to use them for. When you speak, it's more than just the tone of your voice, the cadence when you pause, where you lean forward and backwards. It's also the space that you take up. Whenever you are trying to deliver a line and you want it to be memorable, if you can punctuate it with a body language or with a motion, it's great. So for example, when I was in college, I did a pitch competition that was only 60 seconds. It was a one minute pitch competition. And so I figured out a body language motion in association with every single sentence of that pitch. And by the end of the competition, it turned out that every other competitor knew my pitch cold because there was so much body language that made it easy to remember the sentences. Not only does this make it more memorable and easy to remember what you're saying, it's almost like you're an actor. You're putting on a show, but you're doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. And the last really important one is eye contact. You'll notice even as I'm talking to you in this video, I'm modulating my eye contact. I might go from here and like, it's like a little bit fuzzy to I go, I lean in, I look at you. I take a little bit of time. And so the closer you can get to someone's face, again, you gotta ping off of your environment. Don't encroach on someone else's space. That's the most important thing. But aside from that, you can play around with it. Those are great external things to do. Let's talk about internal things that you can do. First and foremost is don't sell. Communicate who you are and tell stories. If you make a sentence, you make it out of context, it's a lot less powerful. But if you put it in context, chronologically in time, according to who you are, why you are relevant to it, you end up allowing the other person to feel empathy towards you in a way that having an individual fact lying in space, it's harder to feel empathy towards. Let's say I meet someone for the first time or I'm doing a Zoom call with someone. Let's say it's a job interview and I'm interviewing them. And I get on the call and I notice that they're nervous. What I'll do is I'll make it less nerve wracking for them by saying something like, hey, you know, where in the world are you today? And then I'll be like, well, great to meet you. I'm really glad to meet you. How about this? How about I'll give you a little bit of my story and what we're up to at Speechify and then I'd love to hear some of your story. Does that sound good? And they'd be like, yeah, that sounds great because now I've taken all the pressure off of them. And really, I don't need to tell them my life story, but if I start by telling mine and I go really deep, really vulnerable, they'll feel comfortable doing the same thing. You know, life at the end of the day is all about love and connection. And the more opportunities you open yourself up to connecting with other people, the richer your life becomes. And so when you are communicating with someone one-on-one, -on -one, try to avoid being transactional and just talking about the business value, whatever, and try to connect with people as human beings. Be vulnerable, talk about your big ambitions, put things in context, tell them as a story, people will resonate a lot more strongly with you and you will enjoy the interactions more. As part of that, you should feel comfortable with silence. If you're having a conversation with someone and they're not filling the space and you're not filling the space, that's okay. A lot of people start to feel anxiety when this happens and they feel the need to fill the space, but no. If you wanna come off as confident, if you wanna come off as charismatic, be comfortable with silence. Now, it is true that you shouldn't let the silence last long enough that the conversation loses its momentum and moves on. So you should figure out how to kickstart the conversation back up, but don't feel the need to fill every single silence moment every single time. The other point in this context is don't immediately feel triggered. If someone says something and you feel triggered, sit with it for a moment. Let it percolate. Take a deep breath and then respond in a non-triggered manner. If you want to be charismatic, the most charismatic thing in my opinion is to be empathetic.
So that's the goal, is to sit in the shoes of the other person, understand them, make them feel seen, make them feel heard, and that's how you communicate really in an enlightened way with elegance. Knowing that everything will be okay is the most attractive trait in another human being. If you have a friend, and no matter what's going on around you, they're cool, calm, collected, they're active, they're engaging, but they're not stressed, they emanate this energy of calm, you almost feel like when you're in the same room as them, you're brought under their aura, and they feel so self-assured that you feel protected just because they're in that room, man, that's someone everybody wants to be friends with. This is something that is very difficult to fake. It's something that you need to genuinely feel. So how do you get to the state of feeling self-assured? The first one is you want a couple of wins under your belt. David Goggins calls this having cookies in your cookie jar. I would actually attribute most of my confidence to this. So other than getting unconditional love from my parents and my siblings, the biggest thing that's attributed to my confidence is I set big, hairy, audacious goals often, and I do not give up. You might not be the smartest person in the room. You might not even be the person who is able to work the hardest in the room. But as long as you have perseverance and you never give up, you can't fail. Lincoln has a great quote. You cannot fail unless you quit. Because life is not a football game. It doesn't end when the buzzer hits. Life ends when you die. And so it is the case that for a lot of my goals, either I achieve them or I die. That's the only option because giving up is just not in my vocabulary. And once this is true for you, people who are in the same room as you will feel it. And especially when things get hard, they'll gravitate towards you as a leader. 